recording. Okay, so we're good to go. Um, yeah, hi, Bon. How are you? Um, yeah, so uh, you guys uh, know the format for those uh, who are here for the first time. Uh, basically, I'm going to blab about a couple of things that uh, we have been working on. Um, and then after that, we have a, a Q&A. Uh, it would be good if you guys use the Q&A tab uh, on uh, Big Marker to post the questions because it's easier to um, keep track of uh, the questions there were already answered and stuff like that. Uh, they might get uh, buried uh, under the chat window. Um, but yeah, I have a couple of things uh, I wanted to discuss with you today. Um, first, uh, a quick uh, update on version 2.0. Um, we are making a lot of progress uh, and things are looking really, really good. Uh, most of the the base code that we had to rewrite from scratch, uh, it's it's done. So what we have right now is a bunch of uh, base classes uh, and adding the new features. Uh, it's going to be much simpler now that uh, the foundation is there already. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm I'm really proud of uh how the code is looking right now uh it's super developer friendly uh we put uh a lot of effort in making sure that it's really well documented um yeah i'm excited uh, i'm hoping that uh for if, if not for the next webinar in a couple of weeks for uh the next next webinar uh, I should be able to have some actual uh, uh, screens to demonstrate. We are not 100% set on how uh, the UI, the UX uh, will look like yet. Uh, we are pretty close, but not 100% sure yet. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to have a, an actual demo uh, with you guys, and I'm hoping to do that uh, on the next webinar. Um, yeah, let me see what else I have for you here. Uh, yeah, just, uh, uh, another thing on 2.0, uh, um, we, we, we are pretty confident about a date, um, uh, internally. I'm not sure, based on my previous experience, I'm not sure if I'll, if I'll ever make that date uh, uh, public or not. Uh, but um, I know that, you, that some of you guys are like uh, wondering if it's something that's going to come out in 2020 again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, it, it's probably coming uh, a lot earlier uh, earlier than most of you guys uh, are expecting. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I I agree, uh, Richard. I agree. Uh, that's why uh, I, I'm trying to post some uh, some updates on the group with uh, the features that we are working on. Uh, I did that for the, the wizard. Um, and I'm planning to do that with the other screens as well. That way we can, uh, I can just like release a, uh, some uh, short videos uh, uh, demonstrating how we're planning to have the, the, the UI work and gather feedback there and use that feedback to inform uh, the development and make tweaks, and make sure it works the best way it can. Sure. Um, second uh, topic I wanted to talk with you is about the survey. 
uh, I posted the, the survey link on the Facebook group. And then yesterday I, I sent it to uh, the entire uh, email list. Uh, on the, in the past like 12 hours, we got uh, 120 replies already. And I'm learning a lot from uh, reading the, the replies. Uh, lots of good insight in there. Uh, uh, it's great to see what features matter, matter the most for you uh, and what the features you guys think uh, should be prioritized uh, in the future. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, compiling some of the data from that survey and posting a report on the Facebook group. Uh, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a little longer uh, just to make sure that people, uh, that we get the most uh, uh, replies possible. Um, yeah, there, there's a couple of things that I noticed uh, from uh, reading the, the replies. And I thought that it was super interesting that we basically have uh, a lot of networks on the on the extremes. So a lot of networks with one, two, three, ten paying customers, and then on the other side we have a lot of networks with two hundred and uh, five hundred or uh, nine hundred. But we don't have a lot of networks in uh, the middle there. So I thought that was super interesting. I'm not sure uh, why that's the case. Uh, but it does, uh, it does uh, help me understand that there is some sort of barrier there. Uh, that makes it difficult to get over the first five or 10 paying customers. Um, and if that's the case, and it seems to be the case, I think that uh, it's something that we need to work on, make sure we make more material uh, available uh, to help people grow uh, their networks. I, I was talking with uh, Mike Short uh, yesterday uh, from Waspro um and yeah like we we talked about a lot uh, uh, a lot about this because like buying wp ultimo is the first step in a very long journey and i want to make sure that we are not just selling uh wp ultimo for you guys i want to make sure that we are there to help you grow the network as well uh yeah, to make sure that you can grow uh, a business on top of WP Ultimo. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, and the last topic I wanted to discuss is about uh, a post that I added to the group a couple of days ago about um, a possible new uh, business model for WP Ultimo. Uh, and if you guys have any questions about that post specifically, I'm going to, to post the link here. Um, uh, if you feel free to post that to the Q&A. Um, but I just want to reiterate that uh, I'm not going to put anything that is crucial uh, or core to the plugin uh, in a separate service. Uh, the things that we're going to put in there are things that are uh, not feasible from a, a, a plugin standpoint. There's only so much we can do uh, from the scope of a WordPress plugin. So, for example, if you want to check if your website or your subsites are online or not, 
we can't perform that check from within the network because if there is any fatal errors uh, taking your site down, that code that makes that check for you is not going to run. Uh, so those are, are the kinds of services that are a good fit for a service like that. And the idea is that basically uh, we, we want to, trans to, to make sure WP Ultimo is a sustainable business that we can continue to grow and hire more people to help with support and development uh, and create content to make sure we help you guys uh, grow your networks. So that's, that's another uh, way to try to achieve that as well. So if you guys have any questions uh, specifically about that, uh, feel free to post that to the Q&A. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much all that I had here on my end. Um, I see that we have a question already here on the Q&A. Uh, if you guys have questions, uh, just post it there. Okay, uh, so Richard, uh, no pressure, just a really rough guide for a 2.0 to know for my own development. Is Q3 or Q4 a realistic guesstimate? Uh, yeah, Q3, uh, Q3 is probably uh, a very realistic estimation. Yeah, uh, let me check on the Facebook group here to see. It's probably a good idea to let them know that the transmission is not going to be available there. Um, okay, uh, let me see what you guys are saying here on the chat. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, for, for the folks that are waiting for 2.0 to start, um, uh, I could see how that is, it's a good idea. Uh, we are going to have a migrator um, be released with 2.0. Uh, migrators, uh, I was always scared uh, of migrators because like there's a lot of things that can go wrong, but we had to write a migrator for pro sites and the results were pretty good. So, and uh, we, we learned a lot about like putting safeguards in place to make sure we don't mess uh, with your data uh, and things like that. So uh, we will still recommend that you do a, a backup before running the, the migrator, but uh, the chances of something going uh, catastrophically wrong are pretty minimal. Okay. What's the status of DNS improvement that Matt's working on through his company? I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What I can say is that um, the code for domain mapping uh, on 2.0 uh, 
is a part of the new code that we spent some time making sure we don't break anything. So uh, I'm pretty confident that we are not going to break uh, the DNS add-on that uh, Matt has developed. Okay, guys, uh, do you have any other questions? Um, yeah, so I'll talk a bit more about the things that we are working on. Um, so one of the things that we took some time to get to work, um, uh, was that basically every, um, data, uh, entity that we have on 2.0, uh, they are created, uh, extending, uh, one of our base classes and, those classes implement uh, REST API support and WP CLI support out of the box. So uh, basically you, you'll be able to create uh, plans and coupon codes and uh, pretty much everything, subscriptions, customers, new accounts, new websites using WP CLI and or uh, the REST API, so uh, that opens up a lot of cool possibilities. You can create like custom scripts to uh, migrate sites or create uh, new plans from the uh, uh, a terminal window or uh, use uh, services like Zapier to create new plans, create new subscriptions. Uh, yeah, so we're pretty excited with that. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you guys saw that um, uh, Let me see if I can find it. But Jeremy uh, Halon, uh, he posted about a widget package for uh, Beaver Builder. Uh, and that's something that we are actually uh, implementing somewhat natively for uh, 2.0 as well, so we, I'm not sure if we're going to do uh, those for page builders right out of the box, but uh, basically everything that, every element that we'll have for uh, 2.0, uh, they have a short code uh, that you can use everywhere and a Gutenberg block as well. So for those that are planning to create uh, custom dashboards on the front end, uh, that's something that you'll be able to do. Okay, uh, last webinar, you mentioned Cardflows was working on a direct integration with WP Ultimo. Have you been updated by your CF contact? Uh, so uh, it doesn't really make sense for us to uh, invest a lot of time in a card flows integration right now because 
it would get dated really, really fast. But uh, as soon as Tupeno is out, it, it, it's something that we're going to do. Uh, yeah, I, I met uh, the, the founder of, uh, I forgot the, the name, uh, Brainstorm Force, uh, which are the guys behind uh, card flows during the WordCamp US. And we talked about a lot of uh, how interesting ways to make uh, the two plugins work together uh, by passing uh, WooCommerce. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, for that to work. Uh, they need to to get rid of the Woo WooCommerce part on their side. I'm not sure how well they, if they managed to do that already. Uh, but as soon as that is in place, uh, make sure making sure it works with WP, which shouldn't be uh, uh, difficult. Is there a list of planned uh, 2.0 features, differences from V1? Uh, we do have one that it's uh, internal. I can try to uh, revise it and, and make it uh, publicly available. I'll, I'll add that to my to-do list here. Um, but yeah, there are the major differences are going to be uh, under the hood. Uh, basically, everything works differently. Uh, we now have custom tables for almost everything: uh, plans, uh, subscriptions, uh, uh, domains. Everything is a custom table now for performance. Um, but a lot of the features are just being migrated and the major differences are, are basically uh, on plans because now you have a lot of more flexibility. You can create plans that uh, with different uh, recurring uh, periods, you can create a plan that uh, renews every two days, every three weeks, uh, different uh, currencies. Uh, we're, we're planning to support that out of the box. So, yeah, major differences are on the plan side of things uh, with add-on sales. Uh, and then we have tax support for uh, customers in Europe, which uh, they need to handle VIT, which is a huge pain. Um, yeah, and, and basically fixing all the small uh, issues that WPUTMO has right now. So domain mapping not being really reliable, uh, only being able to have one map domain uh, per site, which is a very stupid limitation to have. Uh, uh, another thing that we have is that that is different is that we have a, a new entity. So right now, uh, subscriptions are linked to WordPress users. Uh, and one user can only have one subscription. What we're, go we're going to do is that we now have another entity, which is called customer and uh, each WordPress user can have only one customer, but one customer can have uh, multiple subscriptions. So that, that opens a lot of uh, possibilities of things like uh, allowing your customers to uh, sign up for different subscriptions for different sites uh, and things like that. 
So a lot of the things are still going to be the same, but with uh, uh, the performance really, 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 really uh, improved. Uh, and some of the things are going to change radically. Hi, William. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I I did run some tests today, but I wasn't able to replicate it locally. It might be something related because mapping on a local installation is not really how it works. So I'm going to test today, today, or tomorrow morning. M most likely tomorrow morning on a live install, and. I'll let you know. You're not actually the the only one reporting this issue. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening to be to be completely honest, but I'll let you know. Okay, uh, do we have any other questions? Something that you guys want to discuss? Uh, Have you guys heard about uh, WordCamp Europe? Uh, WordCamp Asia. Yeah, basically they decided to cancel it. A lot of people are going to lose a lot of money <laughs> with no refundable plane tickets. Yeah, <laughs> not pretty. Uh, what's the question, TV? Um. Yeah, um, that's not something that I asked on the survey. It w probably, yeah, yeah, I probably should have asked that. <laughs> but from from my experience, uh, it's not it's not not the largest uh, networks. They are not charging like a lot. Uh, it's usually um, uh, between twenty nine, uh, fifty nine. Uh, something like that they are really going for mass adoption so yeah yeah i i think most of most of them give uh free trials and most of them are diy but but also, from my experience, all of their uh, they 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 have a lot of they've done a lot of work in terms of onboarding, uh, in making sure that the first login uh, it, uh, explains the platform to the end user. So uh, they 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 or most most of them or either have custom uh, dashboards that they develop themselves or uh, they have some sort of onboarding process that makes understanding the platform easier for the end user. Um, Eric is asking, could plans be set up to allow for order services 
other than websites such as design service, etc. Yeah, th this is one of the major features of 2.0. Uh, we're calling it add-on sales. Uh, it basically allows you to create uh, different types of products uh, and have that be offered to your customers uh, during sign up or uh, inside the, the dashboard. So you can do offer things like SEO help or uh, I'm not sure, uh, plugin bundles or theme bundles, things like that. Yeah, so uh, there are different types of products on 2.0. Uh, so we don't really have plans anymore. We have uh, this new thing, which is called products, and we have different types of products. Plans are uh, a type of product. Then we have services, uh, which are, are things like what you suggested, like design services, or SEO help, things like that. And we have packages, which is basically plugin bundles or theme uh, bundles. So basically uh, you can make, you can create these different types of products um, and offer them at sign up as cross sales or um, major, mainly as cross sales and then inside the dashboard, you can make those products available to uh, your customers as well. So they'll have diff different subscriptions to different services. Uh, you can make those services uh, a one-time fee or a recurring service, service as well. Uh, yeah. So Andrew is asking uh, if I can briefly list the new features for 2.0, expanding on Eric's question. Yeah, sure. So uh, uh, the the two major features I would say uh, would be this this product idea, uh, which allows you to create different services and products. Uh, then we have uh, tax taxes. Uh, and then pretty much everything that we have right now is uh, we are taking it to the next level. So for example, for domain mapping, I wrote a post about that on the, the group. Uh, we now, uh, we take care of domain mapping as the domain progresses uh, through its life cycle. So when your customer first maps a domain mapping, we make sure that the DNS uh, is correctly uh, set up before activating that domain mapping. And then uh, before we switch that domain to HTTPS, we make sure that there is a valid uh, SSL certificate for that domain. So a lot of the things that uh, you, you need to manually configure today, uh, we are trying our best to guess ourselves uh, and make sure that uh, everything runs uh, as smoothly as possible. So uh, you won't need to worry about uh, a site not being loaded because the SSL certificate is not, is, uh, it's not valid for example. Um, yeah, let me think if I can remember of anything else. Uh, we do have uh, staging mode. So uh, we basically turn off uh, everything that has um, side effects. So if you're running your network on staging mode, uh, we detect that and we 
uh, prevent emails from being sent out, uh, uh, webhooks, uh, API calls to Stripe or PayPal. So you can basically do everything that we you need to do uh, on your staging uh, installation, and that won't have any side effects on the real customers. Um, uh, we'll have uh, support agents, so you'll, you'll be able to create uh, a new kind of super admin, but restrict the access. Um, so you can have someone that is able to manage uh, subscriptions, for example, but is not able to create new plans or create new coupon codes. Um, Yeah, let, let me see if I can find the... Um, about CLI. Uh, so basically, um, uh, basically, uh, CLI is every uh, data entity that we have on WP Ultimo. Uh, it it will have uh, REST API endpoints and WP CLI support. So uh, you'll be able to create plans, coupons, subscriptions, customers, services uh, using uh, WPCLI. Uh, can you talk more about the staging feature? What is the workflow with that? Is that a duplicate site? Uh, yeah, so, so maybe uh, staging, uh, it's not the best name for it. Um, we are not implementing stage staging on our end yet. So basically the staging feature uh, is useful if your host provider uh, has something like a staging mode. Where, uh, because right now, if you have a, uh, a host provider that has a staging mode. When you duplicate your network to a staging mode, uh, if something uh, happens uh, on the staging site and that triggers an email or a webhook call, that will interfere with, with your real network. So what our staging mode does is basically disable all of that to make sure you can run your tests uh, without breaking uh, uh, everything. Okay. Uh, is there a WP security plugin you recommend that integrates well with WP Utimo, or does WP Utimo handle security well? So, uh, we try our best to not leave any security holes. Uh, it's even part of our uh, development workflow. Uh, we have a, a couple of tools that basically read our entire code searching for uh, security breaches. Um, but yeah, but uh, you're, still, you're still running WordPress and there are some known it's always good to have added security. Uh, the folks of WebArcs, they really, uh, we work together to make sure that their plugin uh, works well with multi-site and especially with WP Ultimo. Uh, they are the only ones that actually reached out uh, to us trying to make sure that uh, their plugin works well with multi-site and Ultimo. So 
that's the only one that I really feel comfortable uh, recommending. Okay, how will WP Ultimo Ultra help us in the long run as WAS owners? Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I like how the name is already uh, stuck in. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we want to offer extra help for the networks that are, uh, that are running that service. So one of the things that we are going to do is to embed our support chat uh, inside the admin. So if you have any uh, problem that is like urgent, you can activate the chat. And since we, we have the the chat in there, uh, as soon as you start a new ticket, uh, we'll have info like uh, the PHP version, uh, WordPress version, uh, WP Ultimo version, uh, things that will make uh, helping you get the problem sorted uh, really, really uh, quickly. Uh, we're planning to have a uh, remote uh, support there as well. So uh, if you just toggle a button, um, one of the WP Ultimo support agents will be able to control your mouse and see the issue uh, by themselves right there inside your network. Um, another thing that we plan to implement uh, is uh, preemptive uh, bug fixing. So there are a lot of bu bugs uh, in environments like a WP Ultimo network that they only happen uh, when some something very specific uh, is occurring. So uh, maybe there's a huge issue in your network that never happens for a super admin uh, but happens to your customers every day, but that they don't report to you. So the idea is that uh, we are also going to monitor uh, those kind of errors, uh, replicate them locally, uh, and patch them for you and for every everyone else, really. But yeah, those kinds of uh, small uh, services that will be there uh, to make sure you can, uh, you get help as soon as you need. Okay, if a multi-site gets infected by a virus, does the virus infect the network files or an individual subsite or both? Uh, right now I have Malcare and it sets up a firewall for all the sites, even though they say I need it for each site. So uh, the thing about multi-site is that uh, it is a single WordPress installation. So if you get infected, um, all of the subsites are infected as well. There's a, a single code base. Uh, that's why it's really important to uh, control the plugins that you that you install, make sure that they're all up to date because uh, the subsites are just different tables uh, on the database. The files that they are using are all the same. So if you get infected, the entire network uh, will get infected. I actually gave a talk um, on a WordCamp here back in Brazil about this. 
um, uh, because like there are so many plugins available out there uh, and we can do pretty much everything we want because there's a plugin that do what we want to do and if you're not careful you might end up with a WordPress installation with like 50 plugins and each one of those plugins uh, was developed by a different developer uh, with different levels of experience with PHP and WordPress and basically every time you you install a new plugin uh, you're adding a potential uh, security flaw to your network so it's really important that you try to keep uh, your plugin count to a minimum and that the plugins that you do install are uh, well tested, well uh, maintained, and up to date. There was a question in a group about child themes. Does changes to a child theme future to all existing subsites or only new ones? I'm not sure if I understand the question. If you're actually changing the files of the child theme, uh, then uh, those changes are going to work for all the subsites because as I, I just mentioned, uh, every site is using the same files. So if you make a change to a child th uh, theme, not to the files, uh, those changes are going to affect the entire uh, subsites. Yeah, I I'm not familiar with how malware works. Uh, does it actually clean uh, the malware infection if it finds one? Because if that's the case, then then yes. Yeah. Uh, I know that WebArch, they, they do offer a service uh, for malware cleaning, but I don't think that their plugin does that automatically. Okay, guys, uh, we're approaching the the one hour mark. Uh, do you have any other questions? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I think that Eric has another question. Could we potentially create child themes that can uh, update, which will help with future changes to the child themes? Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Multiple child themes for each of our templates. Yeah, so um, which template? Yeah, that that would be possible, but I'm not sure what's what is the problem that you're trying to 
to solve here. If you just want to make sure that uh, there are some custom functionality that will only be available to that particular site template, then that I think that's a good way of doing that. But um, a child theme, it's only the, the code for the theme. Uh, the site template, it's actually the theme, uh, the plugins that are active, and all the settings saved on the database. So, yeah. I'm not sure if I, same template. Yeah, so it depends on the type of update that you're referring to. Are actually uh, talking about data, like pages or posts, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's something that is hard to to. I'm not sure how you'd fix that using child themes because uh, the design part of the, the, the thing, if you're using, especially if you're using a page builder or something like that, uh, that's all on the database. So if you make that, the change to uh, the site template, uh, that's not going to propagate to, to the subsites. This is one of the major issues that we are trying to come up with a clever way of fixing uh, but it is hard, especially if your customer has made any change to uh, the pages, to the content. Okay, guys, um, I think that's it for today. Um, next webinar, probably uh, two weeks from now, uh, hopefully with some 2.0 uh, uh, demos for you. Really excited. Uh, and thanks for taking the time. I... Uh, I always think that it's super cool that uh, we can have these conversations from time to time. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, William. So, yeah, guys, see you next time then. Thank you. <laughs>